the difference between pointless drama and narrative drama. Pointless drama is the philosophy that drama never held weight beyond a certain ageist point in your life. And ageism applies to all ages. It's not just the older golden years people. It's any age of your life, no matter how old you are, young or, sh or old. Narrative drama is the principle that you can use a, an example of fake fiction to resemble real life. And it can still be its own thing. That's the whole point of a lot of what we have, even art and animation, is that it's its own thing. It doesn't have to mimic real life. Even while not in the schizophrenic mode, it doesn't have to be about literally resembling real life, okay? Get that through. That's as a whole with entertainment, not this woo-woo shit. Okay, not, the, not even this sophisticated psychological paradigm of entertainment is the definition of unrealistic expectations for social life. No. Get out of that. Get that out of your noggin, please. That's not how even real life works, not let alone our, 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 our artificial creations, okay? That doesn't even have to be spiritual. That's literally the point. It's like, why would you... Uh, before I get back into the, the drama stuff again, topic thing, narrative and uh, narrative and pointless, why would you say that about entertainment fiction? Why would you say, oh, if you're going to look for specific kinds of people in real life to be friends and relationships with, why would you have to make that unrealistic? That Because that in itself was not unrealistic, right? That wasn't unrealistic expectations. That wasn't that, and I have a big gripe with even the idea behind the the. There, this is a this is okay. As funny as this internet meme is, even to me, the idea behind uh, expectations versus reality is a joke in itself, right? Because because cringe can be cringe in itself, right? Trolling and cringe can be different and and the same thing for some weird reason these days. So when you can describe, when you can describe the, um entertainment being different from reality, then why would expectations be different from reality in the way you use it for the examples of your real life? Just because it can seem phantasmal. That's, to me, that's more pointless than the thing I'm talking about in the drama in this video. <laughs> but, uh, but when expectations versus reality is the point, why do you still have other zero expectations that aren't just higher or lower, okay? That's what gets, that's what grinds my gears with the expectations of reality meme. But anyways, again, pointless drama versus narrative drama. Why do we have a dichotomy between nihilism and morality? It's like, why do you have to play like that? There are people, plenty of people. When you okay, let me play like this: when it's, when you're born into this earth, it doesn't have to be woo woo or spiritual. We choose to incarnate here, right? Whether you have emotional context or not, we choose to incarnate here. And then when you get into the world, and you're like. Okay, I don't necessarily believe in the starseed philosophy, but it's still a little different there. Even then, you could be an nihilistic and atheistic or something like that, okay? It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be about religion or spirituality. Why, of all things, are you going to force someone else to be nihilistic other than yourself? Why would you be in a world where the whole time you're alive... I'm not calling out the... Oh, okay, this is the only time I'm, I'm literally being ageist. But when you're a veteran old person, so-called so -called cliche, age, sage, whatever you call that, and your whole experience in life is to be prejudiced, we all know that person who's like, I know what doing the right logical thing is in an emotional context, and then they die in their old age thinking that that was the right thing to do. It wasn't. Even youngsters are like this. So when they're born to the world, and this is my envy speaking for me, my projection, my trauma. When they're born to the world and they think that it's going to only be the case that they're bored in their childhood, they're nihilistic in their adulthood, and in between, things that have to matter are just an end to a, end to a means, means to an end. So, they're, so in other words, they have the omniscient placeholder of just getting their ends to meet, but still being happy perpetually. And then everything else just falls into place and not has it had to be overcomplicated. My gripe with that is in particular how they say things like pointless drama versus narrative drama. Why would it have to be an example or a concrete fact? Because I get pissed off about certain other things. Like when people tell me that my own examples over have a right to overwhelm the conversation, it's like, no, it was an example of the argument. And even then I don't see arguments the same way as them. I don't see arguments as being the whole point of information and communication. So that's a little different for communication philosophy. If communication philosophy even exists. For me, it does. Because that was the biggest gripe of my, my communication skills being clear, concise, all that. That's another way of see it anyways. 
and not even just an exception to the rule, Pandora's box, Rhinos Cat, freaking can of worms, all that other stuff, as their own an anti philosophy or anti evil. Now I'm getting to way other shit, which again, <laughs> can of worms, anyways, even in my denial of that, but that's so different. That's its own exception. A little, a little out there too, but. But my my gripe really is, not to literally explain that how drama, either in a narrative or pointless example of that alone, is not to say that drama is pointless literally, or to say that drama cannot possibly be pointless literally. It's to, it's to really pick at their brains of the people, both friends and enemies alike, who have said that, or even loved ones and haters alike. Who have said that when it came to evil villainy or waste of oxygen or anything else of the depiction of those things, whether their lives matter to them or not, whether they live to be a hundred or not, whether they are actually doing their job at a factory or just legitimately living their mission for any other reason that could or could not be spiritual, why do they think drama is pointless? Why do they use drama in a narrative fashion in their fiction? Again, I'm going to repeat this three other ways and it's going to sound funny, but. Why do they think drama is only bad when it's being used? Why do they only think drama is only good when it has to be used? Now, that's, that's all I need. Two more tries. Two more tries. Okay. Why do they think that drama cannot be bad if it is only good and vice versa? So that's the third one already. And fourth and final reason. Fourth and final iteration. I hate iterations, but here we go. Not even consistency for that matter. But if drama is pointless... And a narrative. Why is the slice of life genre meaningful and real life entertaining? Drama as a whole is a tool. The same way money is an energy and romance is not even included in the five. Okay, now I, know, now I brought this already into the spiritual stuff. Not, you can't even really like, bring love and energy Love and money energy into this, the 5D, but that's a different. That's, that's an entirely different thing. But when, when money is in a set and an energy, and love is in its own way also in a set, but definitely energy. I think drama is in a set. It's like that's the difference between it being narrative and pointless. It's like for nihilism to be pointless to redefine your meaning anyways, and then for drama to be a narrative which is not schizophrenic. It's like that's the thing, same thing. It's like it's conceded for the right reason. It's like it doesn't have to be that bad. That's what keeps getting me about drama. Is like, if you can put it by label, and this is going to make sense to some of you already, if you can put it by label and only judge it when it has a name, of course you're not going to know what drama is, whether you use it as, as, as a successful tool or not. But at bare minimum, it has to already be in a set if it can be a, a narrative and a pointless factor of life. Drama is not pointless for bullying. It is not only useful for narration in a story. If you write good dialogue in a script, good for you. If you don't want to deal with people who only took advantage of you for things that will never make sense, even though everything inherently happens for a reason, whether you like to believe that it was for you to you or not, because everything, by the way, not even having to be immutable, but everything happened for you anyways, not to you. So, and even then we have this weird world where I still have sympathy for, yet again, I keep talking about this, done, done to death, newsflash, that, uh, that I, I, I have a lot of sympathy for the opposite sex, how real, how real this world gets, and how all these specific it gets. I have very mad respect for girls and women, because it's like, not just because I have a, I always believed in their personalities and their style and creativity and complexion and flow, but other things too. One more minute, I'll go into this. When you, next time you think about this title of the video, where pointless drama and narrative drama are not the same thing, I want you to think about how you dealt with other people in your life. When you grew up, what was the frog and toad philosophy of jumping out of the well to see if the other side was greener than the grass that was on your side? In other words, grass is always greener, as a quote, and if you really, really only wanted the opposite way you had, no matter what it was, what kind of person were you then? When your life was, okay, for me, for, for example, my life. I was only objective when I grew up, whether I had a choice or not. Then I was only subjective when I had a choice or not, when I grew up. And now the, the other set of 13 by 13 by 13 years of existing on this planet didn't have to be forced nihilism. But what was there instead of giving forced meaning? Was drama pointless? Was drama a narrative? Was it conceived the wrong way or even the right way? Please decide for that.